They started out calling them a dog pound. Then they became an animal shelter. But today in Douglas County, we call it an animal services building. Hello, I'm Mike Mulcair, third district commissioner and welcome to DCTV 23 and this month's district dialogue. Why animal services? Well, a lot happens here. Certainly animals, future pets are sheltered here, but they also receive medical care, including surgery, health checkups, vaccinations, microchipping, and sometimes grooming to help them put their best paws forward. This is supported by the wonderful relationship the facility has with our local veterinarians. Pictures are posted on the internet to promote adoptions. Volunteers work to exercise the animals and help care for them. And animal rescues assist the resource officer in finding permanent families and homes. A pet pantry is operated from here and educational and outreach programs are managed from here. The shelter, yeah, I still call it an animal shelter, does a lot on behalf of animals and their families, frequently in partnership with the Douglas County Humane Society. It is located at 2171 Mack Road in Deer Lick Park, which is what Bomar Road turns into when it crosses Fairburn Road. The new facility consists of 18,420 square feet of space and will hold about 110 dogs and 100 cats, far in excess of the old shelter. It's a facility that Douglas County can be proud of. Let's go and take a look and meet some of the people who work there and let them tell us about it. Hi Francis, how you doing? I'm doing good, how are you today? Good, good. Everything uh, going well here at the shelter? Yes, we love our new space. Um, we're having a lot of adoptions and a lot of people drop by. Okay. I know I came to the uh, grand opening and the place was packed. Yes, it's been packed ever since. Oh really? Yes, it has. So it's, the traffic is keeping up? Yes, it is. Uh, how many pets were adopted that first uh, opening day? Nine. All right. Dogs and cats, what was the mix, do you recall? Usually more dogs than cats is, okay. is our trend. Well, Francis, there's still a lot of people in Douglas County that haven't been to the shelter yet because it's brand new and just open. Uh, could we kind of show them around? Yes, let me show you what we got going on now. Okay. Mm -hmm. We'll start out with our free roam cat room. And we've got some cute kittens in here now. And we use this when we have litter kittens and they can run around and play and it's very attractive. Uh, the public likes to see it and they get adopted out of here really fast. Mm -hmm. So they, they do a lot of cutting up. I noticed these bunks. I was watching a kitten before jumping on as a litter mate from one of the bunks. So, yeah, uh, they, they jump on the bunks uh, and play with the toys that we put in. Okay. And then take naps. Yeah. And um, my favorite feature is our cat condos. This allows the public to see the cats and gives the cats ample space uh, to, to live in the condos. They've got four levels. They go in and out the holes and they have perching, uh, feeding, sleeping, and a litter area here and we've had a lot of cat adoptions and we do have a lot of cats right now. Well it looks like this uh, this guy Sue Hicks is her name mm -hmm. is uh, available but I also see a lot of adoptions pending and what, what does that adoptions pending mean? What, what are the steps? When a customer comes in and selects an animal we put it adoption pending and then we have that animal spayed or neutered before okay. it goes home. Okay. And that's really a, a lot of people like that because then they don't have to spend the time running them to the vet and uh -huh. doing all the things that need to be done. So it's convenient. And it obviously it helps the county, it helps the animal shelter uh, not uh, adopting out animals that might reproduce and, yes. and come back as problems later. It helps our control our population or intakes at yeah. later dates. Okay. Now I see the three levels. What are the three levels? Oh, I can see what's down there. Yeah, yeah, they have a, they have their <laughs> litter box. Um, they've got a, you know perching, sleeping, and uh, additional space, and they're up and down in these spaces all day long. Well, this this guy seems to know what it's about. Yeah, Miss uh, Sue Hicks. Yep. All right. Very good. My name is Pat Fuljum. I'm the chairperson for the Douglas County Animal Control Advisory Board. The advisory board was created by the Board of Commissioners 
for study for animal issues to help animals in Douglas County. Um, each commissioner appointed someone. The chairman of the board appointed, had one appointing. Each person has to live in the commissioner's district. The city of Douglasville also has two appointees. These are all voting members. There's seven of us. And then we have one non-voting member who is a veterinarian. He is a volunteer and he guides us on animal health issues. Actually, when the Animal Advisory Board was created, um, one day I got a letter in the mail, uh, said, congratulations, um, you have been appointed to the Douglas County Animal Advisory Board. I'm like, what is it? So I called the courthouse and I'm like, I've been appointed to something, but I don't really understand what it is or what it's for. And they said, oh, well, uh, one of the chairmen in your district appointed you. So we started going to meetings and after about two meetings we were talking about animal issues and what we needed to do or what the commissioners needed to do which we were only an advisory board uh, as is our name and we advised the commissioners what we would like for them to do or what is needed for the animals but um, we all came to the conclusion that what we really needed was a new animal shelter. Ours was so in bad, bad shape, the old shelter was. Um, it needed so many repairs that it was just not cost worthy to do it. So we started begging and pleading and, and trying to deal with our commissioners, telling them how bad that we, badly we needed the shelter. Um, it's been a long, hard, process. We finally are here. We're so proud of it. It is so beautiful, so state-of-the-art. Um, we had to go to many, or I went to very many budget hearings. Um, I've been with very many um, managers of the shelter. We've all hung in there, all the members. Um, are old. We have three members that were on the original board. The rest of them are new, but um, we have really, really been in contact with each of our commissioners at budget hearings. The public has spoken. There's been many outcries at all the commissioners' meetings. So we, um, the public, I think, are the, are the ones that really swayed the commissioners. Um, the Animal Advisory Board was very instrumental in coming up and helping with the design of the building. Um, we had wonderful architects and engineers. Um, of course, you can see it's a, it's a beautiful building, so the, the, the firm that built the building did such an exceptional job. But um, it took a lot of people to say, this needs to be in here, this needs to be in here. We had to have a lot of input especially from our veterinarian, for instance, for the surgical suite, and just for kennel managers, for all the, the techs, the road officers, everyone had to have an input, and so the Animal Advisory Board kind of set over that, along with uh, the engineers and the architect, especially the architect, when he was drawing the shelter. We love it. We are so happy. Everybody in the county is so happy. Um, it's in a wonderful area and a wonderful park, and we love our new shelter. And the next area I would like to show you is our main kennel area. As you can hear, it's not as loud as our other facility. Um, we have buffer walls and also a noise suppression system that was installed that plays a white noise. Kind of sounds like the air conditioning is running all the time. So we have 40 dogs in our main kennels now, and the kennels allow us to clean them very easily. Um, they have a guillotine door in the back, okay. so we can feed them and give them treats on the other side. They go in and we can clean their area. We can also open that space up if they need more space. Okay. So it's been, it's been very see. helpful. Yeah, we'll, uh, perhaps we'll get on the other side so people can kind of understand what, what you're saying. But the bed, the, bed uh, the, the animals transferred to the other side, the bed is flipped up, and then the floor and everything is cleaned up. That's great. It makes it very easy for cleaning. Yeah. 
And uh, now there are, of course you have this external hallway and then you have the internal hallway which is really for staff. This is where most of your clients or customers would come, they would come down this hallway. Yes. To look at the animals. Yes, they're able to see the animals, the kennels are numbered and then they just ask a staff member to see an animal. We have three interview rooms and a large fenced area to okay. allow them to visit. And so, uh, and so there are actually three hallways like this because there are, are two kennel sections, is that correct? That's correct. Okay, so there's three hallways like this. Okay. And I noticed the, uh, the duct work. Uh, are those, uh, are those uh, systems independent of one another? Yes, or? each animal room is independent. It's on its own ventilation and airflow, and this allows us to not transfer uh, airborne disease from area to area. Okay. If we do have an issue in one area, we can quarantine them until that cleans up, and we can also clean the ductwork very easily. Okay. Yeah, it looks like it's all stainless steel. Yes. Or metal anyway. It's all stainless steel to prevent uh, rust mm -hmm. and that helps because this is a very moist environment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. So um, on our left here we have the puppy room. All right. And um, you can see in the windows here also the, the clients can see in um, and see the puppies. Um, we do allow people to go in these rooms and they're able to see and ask about them and we put puppies under six months of age and small dogs in this area. Okay, and what if you end up with a litter? Where, where are the litters kept? Sometimes they're kept in here if they're old enough. Uh -huh. We also have in our main kennels, our interior panel pops out so we can combine two kennels together. Oh. We actually have a litter now, but we have her covered for privacy, but she's in with our puppies in a kennel that has been combined with another one. Okay. So our kennel space is flexible. Oh, okay. I did see one of the one of the kennels had a, a sheet over it, a mm -hmm. tarp, and that's because the mother, I guess, prefers privacy. <laughs> yeah, she's a, she's guarding her puppies right now. Okay, so, so it makes her less defensive. She, yes. She feels safer that yes, way. Yes, and she'll calm down eventually, but she's a new mom, so they uh -huh. were born yesterday. Oh, all right. I'm Stacy Worsham, I'm the Shelter Supervisor for Douglas County Animal Shelter. Um, I oversee all of the medical care for the animals in this facility, meaning that I make sure that they're getting the correct baths and dips if they have skin issues or the correct dosages of antibiotics. Um, I oversee the heartworm treatments on all of the dogs that are here. We dose them with medications and make sure that they get to and from the vet to have their treatments done. I do all of the bandage changes, any splint changes here, um, do all of the surgery scheduling, order all of the medications. I basically am, I mean, I'm just, I oversee everyone's medical care here. That's what I do. This is our back area where our um, offices are located for the animal control officers. We have small animal quarantine here. What's involved, what, what causes a quarantine? Well, this is an area where we keep our feral cats. So they're under quarantine in that we don't want them to mix with the other animals. Mm -hmm. And we also protect the public. Um, they have to view the animals from outside this room uh, because they might bite. But we do have programs for barn cats, for our feral cats, if anyone is interested in those. Now, what does that, what does that mean? They're adopted out, but they're kind of, they're kind of they don't belong to anybody. <laughs> no, um, they I mean, actually do belong to who uh, adopts them. Uh, uh, some people that have barns or horse barns or farmland would want a feral cat to control rodents, and they're okay. they're not socialized. Okay. So they're, so they're not going to sit in your lap. They're not going to sit in your lap, but yeah. they're going to do the work. On okay. The, All right. At the barn. All right. So it's been a successful program, and they are owned and fed, so we don't abandon our cats. Okay, all right. Oh, I guess, are, are they spayed and neutered so they don't reproduce absolutely. in a while? Absolutely, yes. I'm gonna keep bringing that up yes, because, that's, because that's so important. That's, that's our most important thing is yeah. to have them spayed. And that's, that's the big change here with this new facilities we're doing that as, as a policy. Yes. As, so, very good. Yes, because we have our surgical suite where we will perform the spays and neuters. Okay. Uh, Obviously, the county doesn't have veterinarians on staff. What veterinarians come in and use the surgical suite, and what do they do there? Local veterinarians come in and use the surgical suite, and they spay and neuter our animals before they're adopted. Okay. Uh, so we have uh, various vets that 
that come in and uh, recirculate, they take turns to do that. Uh, kind of a related topic uh, is the animals, dogs or cats or whatever, when they come into the facility, uh, I, I guess they're given a, a health checkup. Yes, what are we, some of the things that you do? We give them an exam in our exam room. We vaccinate them, uh, do um, test them for worms. Uh, we test them for heartworms now, and we test cats for um, feline AIDS and leukemia. And we just really take care of the animals when they come in and get them what they need. That's, uh, that's really a good point because uh, it gives uh, the adopting family a little bit of confidence about the general health of the, uh, of the new pet. Uh, yes. Having and, done that. And they're also chipped, right? Yes, they have a microchip that's registered in our system. Um, our system updates every four hours, so it's very, very fast, but okay. it also updates them with the microchip company. So when they walk out with their pet, they don't have anything else to do except go buy toys. Go buy toys and food. <laughs> and food, yes. <laughs> and food. yes. Uh, mentioning the chips now, uh, that's not, uh, not just a, a local identification, but if, if a, a pet with a chip uh, shows up, you can actually scan it and find out mm -hmm. it, it was it's adopted nationwide. in Louisiana or Portland, Oregon or whatever. Right? Yes, it's nationwide and we also do microchipping for the public. Okay, so uh, somebody who had a, already had a pet not even adopted here, can they come in and have, have the pet microchip? They can and the cost is $15 and okay. it's pre-registered before they leave. Okay, great. That's good information. Hi, my name is Officer Robin Moreland. I'm the field supervisor for animal control. Uh, in animal services. Uh, I am in charge of all the road officers that go out and handle all the citizen generated complaints for the county. Um, the road officers essentially when they're out in this field they will handle any kind of complaint from an injured animal to a leash law violation, uh, bite cases, cruelty investigations, uh, livestock. Uh, we also are responsible for rabies control for the county. So if we have an animal that would be a rabies vector animal such as a raccoon, uh, or Fox, then that would be something we would also respond to. Uh, there are seven road officers currently. Uh, we run primarily from six in the morning till midnight and then are on call the rest of the time. Uh, and we run 24 seven. We're available also on holidays. Francis, there's a reason why we call this animal services. It's really more than a shelter. Would you talk about some of the things that uh, services that you provide to county citizens? Yes, um, we also provide the animal control uh, for the county. Um, we have, uh, we'll have six trucks uh, like this one behind me, and uh, we pick up and re resolve complaints out in the field. We also, we were speaking about the microchips. We also scan them in the field. If we can get in contact with the owner while we're out in the field, we go ahead and return that animal to the owner. So they don't even come in here? They Ho don't hopefully. even come in here if they're microchipped and okay. we can get in touch with okay. the owner and make arrangements while we're out in the field. Okay. Um, so that's a great reason to have your animal mi microchipped. It is. Even if they didn't come from the shelter. It is. Okay. It is a very good reason. Okay. So we return 36% uh, of our animals to back to the owners now. Oh, wow. So that's, that's a very high rate. That's a big improvement. Now, another big difference, and there's a lot of differences between this facility and our old one, uh, is this uh, idea of bringing a truck into an enclosed area. What's the purpose of that, Francis? Well, it allows us to bring the pets in and unload them in a comfortable situation because we can come in one door and close it behind us, and the pets can't escape into the park. And we're allowed, it, you know, it allows us to unload them in a controlled environment. Uh, our trucks are air conditioned. So, you know, they, they never get too hot. And they're they're air conditioned front and back? Front and back. Okay. And they also have <laughs> um, heat in the back. So when okay. they come in, they're kept comfortable in the Sally Port area and we can unload them and take them right into the exam room okay. and get them vaccinated and make sure they have everything they need. We also provide counseling services out in the field. We provide um, citizens with a list of vets. We hand out pamphlets that would talk about our pet pantry. Pet pantry. Mm -hmm. We walked past a room that had a lot of uh, food in it. Is that, is that part of the pantry set up? That is. Uh, the pet pantry is in, um, we work with the Humane Society for the pet pantry. Yeah. And we pick up donations from many different um, people and businesses that donate. And the Humane Society distributes the food to uh, pet owners that are having financial problems 
so they can continue to feed their pets and keep them. And not not have to not let them run them. away or, yeah. or dump them somewhere yeah. or, or even surrender them here. Yes. They're, they're able to keep the pets with the, because they, now they have food. It's not coming out of there. Yeah, you know. we, the Humane Society and the animal services like to say we like to keep people and pets together. Yeah, makes, makes sense. And, uh, and it certainly saves the taxpayer uh, from the process of in, input of an animal and, and upkeep and adoption so, you know, later on down the Yes, line, it so. makes good financial sense to to go ahead and um, keep those animals in their homes. Now, we have a uh, resource officer with the animal shelter. They do a lot of work with uh, rescues and volunteers and outreach. What, what are some of the things that uh, the resource officer does? Well, on our outreach, we go to schools and educate children against um, getting bitten by stray animals okay. and what it takes to take care of a pet. Uh, we, we go also to um, homeowners associations and talk about the best way to help uh, pet owners in their community to keep their animals confined and okay. any other civic group that would like us to come out and speak. Megan, our resource officer, also puts all our animals on Facebook there for adoption. Go. That's another and, one of those services. Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. She, um, and we bring in a lot of adoptions that way. We get people from out of state. Really? It's amazing. And she also reaches out to local rescues when we can't place animals in homes. And we do fundraisers okay. for animals that have been hit by a car or broken leg. We have a kitten with a broken leg now um, that's receiving the care it needs instead of being euthanized. Okay. Well, that's, uh, that's great. I'm tr I bet a lot of people don't know that. I think a lot of people would assume that if we have an injured animal, depending on the extent that they would be euthanized, which used to be past policy and practice across the, the country. Mm -hmm. uh, but this animal services uh, facility actually does surgical procedures, uh, and when they can uh, mend an animal, that's what we do. That's what we do. Okay. Sorry I kind of ran on a little bit, but I'm, I'm, really, uh, I'm really enthused about that aspect of animal services. Yes, uh, we enjoy working here and we enjoy helping the animals in the community and it's good to see the vast majority of them receive good homes or go back to their homes. Now how many uh, dogs and cats can you house here in, in, in the, I guess probably the worst worst case scenario? Well right now we have 42 dogs and 110 cats okay. so we're pretty full on Is cats. that typical? Um, the that's, ratio? That's, yes, it's typical and it, right now we're in the summer so our, our numbers are up higher. Okay. Uh, we could hold 50, 60 more cats and we can hold up to 200 dogs if push came to shove. So well, we them. hope it doesn't get there but certainly as Douglas County grows, as population grows, uh, there's certainly going to be more demand on, on uh, animal services in this facility and the staff. So. Uh, Unfortunately, but that's uh, that's the way of life. Well, we've already seen um, a decrease in intake with the shelter with being responsible with spay and neuter. Okay, great. So we yeah. hope to continue that trend and also it has helped with the pet pantry and keeping animals in their homes and returning animals to their homes out in the field it has helped keep our intake down and has helped our population. Hi, my name is Megan DeBishop and I'm the resource coordinator here at the Animal Shelter. Uh, my job involves coordinating the events, doing the marketing on social media. I also coordinate all the volunteers and also coordinate the rescues here at the Animal Shelter. Uh, you can find all of our animals on adoptapet.com. You just type in our zip code and you can see who's uh, available at the time. Uh, you can also see our Facebook posts. Uh, the Douglas County GA Animal Shelter. Uh, we post videos, we post photos of animals, we post their rescue freedom photos, and it's really a great time, so I hope you join us. Francis, let's talk a little bit about the adoption process. And I noticed as, as we walked around the building, uh, I saw a large expanse of uh, fenced in grass area, and also I see three rooms that are labeled uh, inter uh, what they call interview rooms. Yes. Uh, who's interviewing who? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's for the potential pet parent, the adopter, okay. to spend some time with the animal. They can spend time with cats or dogs in the interview rooms. Um, we also have the outside area that, where they can go and, and walk the animal that they're interested in adopting. Okay. So when they come in, they look around the facility, they tell us what animals they're interested in. 
we let them meet. They can also bring in their animals to meet. Oh, really? Yes, it's a good thing to um, bring in your current animals to meet the new pet. Um, it gives them neutral ground to meet. Okay. And we want a good match. So they're welcome to spend as much time in the interview mm. room as they need to with their potential new pet. Uh, is there a return policy? Yes, we have a 30 day no questions asked return. Sometimes people think it's bad to return an animal, but sometimes they just don't have a good match. So okay. um, the animals usually when they get home, it takes a period of time for them to uh, start being their real self. They might be shy. It took my dog okay. two weeks to bark. Okay. So if they if it's not a good match, they can return them and select another animal. Okay. And usually it happens a lot faster in 30 days. So um, it doesn't happen as much as often as you would think it would. Okay. We well, tell us that. about the, the adoption process. What do people have to do? What What's the... They just fill out an adoption questionnaire. It's not designed to turn them down. It's just designed for us to... Uh, give them counseling on things they may not have thought they needed and to make sure, uh, say if they rent, that they can have the pet in their home because it's heartbreaking to go home and then the landlord show up and say, oh, you can't have this dog here. Okay. So we get all that squared away. Uh, also gets their information so we can reserve the animal for them and then have it spayed and neutered and they can come pick up on a later date. We make an appointment with them for the pickup. Okay, what is the fee? Um, the fee varies. There's a $35 adoption fee, which covers your microchip, your adoption, uh, your vaccinations, and it can be up to $100 total uh, for the pet based on what type of spay and neuter we have to do. Okay, so spay and neuter is a factor in there, and, uh, and we try and offset that cost uh, somewhat. We do greatly. Yeah. We okay. do greatly. So we have a grant that we received from the Department of Agriculture this year for $10,000. We sure did. And we also do the spay and neuter fundraiser. So last year we received approximately 18000 from that. Mm -hmm. And then we'll receive uh, more from this past spay and neuter fundraiser. That's, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we had a great time at that. Yes, we did. Yeah. It was very successful. Yeah. Um, what are your hours? And tell us uh, where people can find you. Well, we're close to the public on Monday. That's when we go through and do our deep cleaning and make sure our animals have everything they need, do our testing. We're open Monday through Friday from, I'm sorry, Tuesday, because we're closed on okay. Mondays, Tuesday through Friday from 1 to 5.30, right. and Saturday and Sunday from 1 to 5. Okay. And people are always curious, why do you open so late? There's things that are going on here. Yes, uh, we're here. Yeah. <laughs> we are here. Uh -huh. uh, we come in and we make sure all the animals are cleaned and the entire building is sanitary before we open to the public. Okay. Well, we're located at 2171 Mac Road uh -huh. in the Deer Lake Park. Okay. And you're, as you approach uh, Deer Lake Park coming off Fairburn Road, uh, then the anim animal shelter, animal facilities is on the left. That's correct. Yeah. I knew that because I found it. You can't miss it. <laughs> yeah, I found, I found it today. Okay. Yes. Well, great. Um, I noticed it's a beautiful building, and I think that was the, re the real intent. We, are, we do have homes across, uh, across the way, and so it was very intentional that the, that the facility not look uh, institutional yeah. and, you know, a lot of chain link and, you know, metal building and that sort of thing, uh, that it be very upscale, and I think, I think we've succeeded uh, wonderfully. I noticed the hydrangeas are in bloom, and people really need, really need to come by and see it. Yes. And, and, and adopt a pet. Yes. Absolutely. Well, it's pretty impressive, isn't it? Um, it's, I, I think one of the most important things to me is, is the, the great impact, the positive impact it's had on the staff, uh, being able to work in a place that can be kept, can be kept clean. It's a, a fun place to come and work, uh, and it's uh, certainly, a lot better facility for the animals in terms of the uh, medical care that they're able to receive here. And uh, I guess one of the most important things is uh, county taxpayers paid for this facility. Uh, it, it cost about $5 million. Uh, no money was borrowed and taxes weren't raised. It came from a reserve fund that had been uh, set aside over several years to pay for the facility. Uh, it's a state-of-the-art facility, but you know it's just a building and it takes people. It takes great staff, uh, it takes committed volunteers, 
Uh, it takes supportive uh, uh, resources uh, such as our rescue organizations and our uh, resource manager all doing their job. Uh, it depends on you too, citizens. The next time you're thinking about adopting a pet, adding a pet to your family, uh, please come here to check it out. Uh, dogs and cats are available for adoption here at Douglas County's uh, Animal uh, Services Facility. And I want you to think of that as the first option, not, not the last option. Uh, my name is Mike Mulcair, 3rd District County Commissioner. And thank you for tuning in to this edition of DCTV 23. Good day.